After winning both games in the Global Series, the Nashville Predators currently are the best team in the NHL. On today's Locked On Predators, we are going to talk game recap. We're going to take a look at the waiver wire and the three stars of the weekend, plus a real quick Monday plus minus. All that's coming up on today's Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked on Predators your first listen of the day. I am Ann Kimmel. I am a writer and editor at InsideThePreds.com, and I'm usually joined by my partner in crime, Nick Morgan, but Nick is off today. Still so much that we have to talk about on today's episode, really a packed Monday morning of Predators information. We, of course, wrapped up the Global Series in Prague. We won't be seeing any more of those amazing Instagram and Twitter posts posts, which kind of is good because the FOMO was real, my friends. The the Prague FOMO was real. Nashville came home four points. They had two wins over the San Jose Sharks. We're going to take a quick look into those games and do a quick recap and also talk about who kind of the three stars of the games were. Um, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but first want to touch real quick on the waiver situation. So on Sunday, the Predators placed six players on waivers. Defensemen Kevin Gravel, Jordan Gross, Roland McEwen, centers Jimmer, Jimmy Huntington, and Mark Jankowski, which Mark Jankowski actually got kind of a long look in uh, training camp and throughout preseason, so that one is of note. Probably, though, the biggest and most interesting name placed on waivers, the one that may cause a little gastrointestinal distress among Predators fans, goaltender Connor Ingram. So at the end of last season, you remember as vaguely as we want to remember in the Colorado series, Connor Ingram came in and played through that series with UC Saros out. And I think everybody sort of felt like this was Connor Ingram staking a claim to becoming UC Saros backup goaltender. And then in the offseason, David Poyle signed Kevin Lankin in one year, $1.5 million deal. And John Hines was very upfront in the preseason in training camp when asked about it, that the, the backup goaltender situation was a competition, that they were really going to wait and see how each played and how it sorted out, that it was kind of anybody's position. Uh, turns out um, Kevin Lankinen seems to have won that role. He started the second of the Global Series games. And again, Connor Ingram on waivers. It'll be interesting to watch and see if anything happens there, if um, he clears through till Milwaukee. I suspect that he will. But if he makes it to Milwaukee, then in Milwaukee, you kind of have this huddle of goaltenders. Thomas uh, Vamachka is now being loaned to an ECA. Uh, ECHL team. So he is spoken for, but you have Devin Cooley, you have Askarov, you have now perhaps Connor Ingram down there as well. So there's a lot going on in the goaltender situation. And I think for everybody today, um, people in Nashville have sort of been dreading it because let's face it on and off ice, Connor Ingram is, um, he is a favorite. Uh, if you're not following him on social media, my friends, you are missing out. So just kind of something to keep an eye on. Definitely um, a moment that I think a lot of Nashville Predators fans had hoped would not come, but let's kind of see how this all plays out with those players on waivers as of Sunday evening when I'm recording this. Uh, this is what the Predators roster looks like. You have Duchesne Forsberg, Glass, Granlin, Jeannot, Johansson, McCarran, Niederreiter, Sanford, Sherwood, Sisson, Smith, Tolvanen, Tomasino, and Trennan. For defensemen, you have Borvietsky, Carrier, Ekholm, Fabro, Yossi, Lazan, and McDonough. And you have Saros and the apparent backup, Kevin Lincoln. So this is where the team stands. They have to be down to a 20 
21 to 23 man roster Monday at noon. So we will keep you posted on how all that goes. If there are any big roster moves, we'll jump in and put up a quick breaking news video on the channel um, and tweet something out. So be sure you're following us on social media so we can kind of keep you up to date on what's happening with waivers and final regular season roster. So speaking of regular season, the Nashville Predators regular season started this weekend, started Friday and Saturday. They had two games back to back against the San Jose Sharks in the global series was such an incredible um, experience, a really neat way to kick off the season. A little weird that the NHL seems to uh, be ignoring the fact that the regular season has started for two of its teams in its social media. It keeps counting down days till the regular season. And San Jose and Nashville's over here like, what have we been doing all this time? Well, the Nashville Predators have been racking up four points in those games. So as we did last season, Nick and I always like to choose one word to describe the game. I'm going to choose one word to describe both of those games. My word for the Nashville Predators games is cogent. Kind of feels a little bit like an SAT word, which is why I chose it. I'm not going to lie. Cogent. It means effective. That was a cogent road trip for the Nashville Predators. Very effective. From a just purely hockey standpoint, the Predators came away with four points, two wins. They got to get some different lines going in a game speed competitive situation, which they had a little bit of in the preseason, but not as much as they're used to. So I think overall, it was really a cogent experience and effective road trip off ice. Let's be honest, this whole global series trip was so much more with Yossi back in Switzerland and with the teams in Prague really was just an incredible, incredible experience. But on ice, this was a cogent trip for the Nashville Predators. If you happen to miss the game, real quick game recap so you know what went down. Predators won the first game 4-1. UC Saros and Nets stopped 30 of 31, I believe, shots. Goals by Kiefer Sherwood, Ellie Tolvanen, Nito Niederreiter, and my man Matt Duchesne with the empty net goal. The second game, the Predators won 3-2. In this game, Kevin Lankinen started in net. Nino Niederreiter recorded two goals. Philip Forsberg had just a gorgeous wraparound goal. And like I said, Lankinen was in net for the Nashville Predators. It was a little bit tense in that second game. I feel like the Predators kind of turtled up a little early in the third with just a one goal lead. But they were able to hold out for the win, come home with four points. And quite honestly, that feels like a success. So coming up, we're going to take a look at a couple of the players that really stood out in these first two games, what I thought about their play, how I think these two games may affect their seasons going forward. We're going to dive into that in just a minute. But first, want to let you know that this episode is sponsored by our great friends at Built Bar. Look, if you have not tried Built Bar and Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And there is a flavor that I am certain you're going to love, you need to try. It is Cookie Dough Chunk Puffs. Cookie Dough Chunk Puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, covered in 100% real chocolate. So you get all of the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, and it's actually healthy for you. Cookie Dough Chunk Puffs are only 160 calories, and they are packed with a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. And what is great about Built Bars is that all of their products are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently. It also provides tons of health benefits. So you can eat something that tastes good and it's going to be good for you. And you are going to love this cookie dough chunk puff flavor. Whether you just need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or you just want to grab a quick bite to go Built is the perfect protein bar and they taste better than a candy bar. Little side note, one of my friend's college friends swears by Built Bar. So parents, if you're listening and you have a kid in college, 
get them some built bars because they're going to grab them and go and they're going to eat something that's healthy they're also going to enjoy them you can ditch the calories the fat the sugar and grab yourself a built bar instead if you want to give built bar a try you need to go to built.com you're going to want to use promo code locked 15 and you're going to get 15 percent off your order that is built.com and promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off at built.com all right so we had games this weekend we had regular season games we are well on our way my friends we're we're two games on our way my friends but we're way ahead of a lot of the other teams and there were three standouts for me, three players that I really wanted to talk about after the global series that kind of stood out and what their performance may mean for them down the road. And the first one, of course, is somebody you've heard me talking about quite a bit in this preseason, and that is Kiefer Sherwood, Rem Pitlick 2.0. See him at training camp. Can't believe how great he is. And hopefully things will maybe take a different path for Sherwood with the Predators than it did with Rem. But that's that's a saga for a whole nother day. Kiefer Sherwood had the first goal of the Predators regular season. It was his first shot as a Predator, and it was his first goal as a Predator, which I think bodes really well for him. Kiefer Sherwood looked great in the first game, offensively, defensively, his transition play, his checking just looked fantastic. He was on a line with Joe Hansen and Nita Ryder. And I think those three really complement each other. I think their style of play really works well together. Uh, he started the second game on that same line as well, which was interesting. I think a lot of people assumed that we would see Phil Tomasino pop into the roster in one of these two first games. He did not. So this is something to kind of keep an eye on as we go forward. But Sherwood started on that second line again. Eventually through the game, I would say probably his performance was not as good as his first, the first game where he scored the goal. So eventually through the course of the second game, he got bumped down and was playing uh, with third line, fourth line through the second half of the game. This is something to keep an eye on with Sherwood because one of the things that John Hines has said specifically when asked about Sherwood, and I think in general you've seen over the course of his coaching here in Nashville, is that John Hines really looks for consistency. And he is always going to play kind of the the hot hand. He's not going to just give a player minutes because of their name or their contract size or um, what they've done in the past. It's where is your game right now and how are you gonna be performing currently for the Nashville Predators? So watching Sherwood maybe not have as good a game in the second game against the Sharks, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what John Hines does with the lineup come Thursday, the home opener against the Dallas Stars. Has Sherwood earned enough goodwill and was his performance good enough in the second game to keep him in the roster and maybe on that second line? Or is Hines going to kind of take note of like maybe Sherwood really had an excellent training camp and an excellent preseason? Is he going to be able to maintain that consistency, that high level of play into the regular season? So something that I think we need to keep an eye on going forward in the next two, three games is where does Kiefer Sherwood fit in? Um, and has he done enough to earn more time in the lineup? Is consistency going to be an issue for him? Because again, John Hines, that's something that's really important to him is consistency. Another player I really want to talk about, and I, and I think everybody in Nashville was really excited about uh, this player after the Global Series, and that is Nino Niederreiter. Uh, Nino Niederreiter, three goals in the first two games. I have to tell you, I was so tickled about this um, when Forsberg scored his goal. I posted a, a GIF or a GIF. Look, y'all, somebody text me, which is it? Is it GIF, GIF? I say GIF. GIF is a peanut butter. Uh, but anyway, I texted a, a GIF and with um, just saying, you know, the Forsberg Duchesne goal race is on. And somebody retweeted that after Nita Ryder scored his second goal with the GIF of Captain America running past Sam along the um, the mall in in uh, Washington D.C. that says "On your left." And I'm telling you, it was it. 
it tickled me to no end. But here we have Nino Niederreiter, two goal or three goals in the first two games. Just a really fantastic performance across the board, not just offensively, but that line really is a tough line to play against. And you know that that just curls John, Hine, John Hines' toes. Um, for me, his standout goal was in the second game. It was a pass from Ellie Tolvanen, incredible, smart play by Ellie Tolvanen to Nino Niederreiter. And what was great is Niederreiter caught the pass. Could have shot it right away, but was smart enough to pause and allow a def uh, defender to kind of momentum carry it past and to shift the goaltender out of the way and make a goal. So just really smart play from Nita Ryder. Nita Ryder has instant chemistry. I think we've seen it all the way through training camp with Ryan Johansson. And again, like I mentioned, Kiefer Sherwood played that first game on that second line, started the second game on the Johansson Nita Ryder line. Eventually, Ellie Tolvanen got bumped up there on the second in the second game. But really, there is something magical happening with Nita Ryder and Johansson, regardless of who you're going to put on that line. And such a huge blessing to Nashville because really that second line scoring drought last season was really a, a huge issue that had to be addressed. And, and I think, you know, we're tough on David Poyle here in Nashville. That's just what's real. We're tough on David Poyle, but I think he did a really great job going out and getting Nito Nita Ryder. You know, look, there were probably a lot flashier names and players available um, in free agency or available through a trade that Poyle could have gotten. But I think it was such a smart move to go out and get Nita Ryder because you get somebody whose natural game fits the style the Predators play. You know, again, could have gotten somebody flashier and there were plenty of flashy names out there. Nick and I talked about wanting some of them here on on Locked On Predators. But I think we really got a player whose natural fit is with us. You know, it's a lot like it's a lot like leather pants. Look, you know, everybody kind of wants leather pants, but leather pants don't look great on everybody. They're not the right fit for everybody. Nito Nita Rider was the right fit for the Nashville Predators and some other team can parade around in leather pants because I think Nita Rider has already proven that he is an easy fit. He is the right style of player. And I think the Predators are really going to enjoy having him. And I think it's great to see Joe Hansen have somebody with some chemistry. It feels like he was dragging that second line along all last season, bless his heart. And so it's good to see just that that clicking happening immediately with Nita Ryder. So I love that. Um, and great game. Can't wait to see what else he does down the road. Third player I want to talk about, and this is not necessarily a player I assumed we would be talking about in this way um, for the Predators at the beginning of the season. That's Ellie Tolvanen. We have talked a lot about Ellie Tolvanen. Last season, we talked a lot about Ellie Tolvanen, and it's not all bad. Um, there was a lot of concern about him last season. He was a part of that second line scoring drought. Uh, but there are so many things to love about Ellie Tolvanen's game. You know, we weren't talking about him last season because he was a hot mess. We were just talking about his scoring. His 200-foot game is incredible. He is a physical player. He is a good checker. He is a smart player, but he just wasn't finding the back of the net last season. And even in preseason, it was like one of those, like, just come on, like, we know you can do it. And it just didn't quite happen. You know, it just wasn't taking off. And I think part of it too is, again, you come back to John Hines and his style of coaching, and he tends to play the people who are hot. And we saw Tolvin and Healthy scratched several times last season. So I think there was maybe a rocky um, or, or just a lot of questions about how is Tolvanen going to fit in this coming season? How are we going to how is Hines going to view him? What does he have to do in training camp to have goodwill with Hines and, and to kind of have Hines believing in him again? And he's done a great job. He had a good training camp, but again, wasn't scoring a lot in practices and the scrimmages. Had a goal. It was just really a beautiful shot. Uh, scored a goal in the first two games of the season. And so I think that really... 
um, is a good sign for him. And then, like I said, eventually in the second game, he started playing on that second line with Nita Ryder and Johansson. And this is a player who I think his style of play also complements them. So we have gone from last season where there really wasn't a lot of good things happening on that second line. And it also didn't feel like there were a lot of options to try out on that second line necessarily to here. You have Johansson and Nita Ryder with great chemistry so far off to a good start, looked really great through training camp. You have Kiefer Sherwood, you have Ellie Tolvanen, perhaps you have Phil Tomasino. You know, we still haven't seen him slotted in the lineup exactly. So something to keep an eye on, but there are options that you can put in on that second line and not necessarily to the detriment of the fourth line. So I think there's some good things happening and it's nice to see good things happening for Ellie Tolvin. And that's, you know, this is a, a player who is really good. He came into the league with a reputation for one thing. He has this nice rounded out game now. And that one thing he was known for is the thing he struggled with. So it's got to be kind of a rough road for him. So it was great to see him score. I'm very interested to see how this season unfolds for Tolvanen because I think the Predators have a really good player in him. And if he can kind of get that shooting mojo back, um, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. So those for me were kind of the three standouts in the game. Of course, UC Saros looked incredible in net back to you know, how he looked um, last season before his injury. So a lot of good things in that game. There were some things that maybe were a little frustrating, and I'm going to touch on those in just a minute because, of course, it is Monday. And, you know, Monday is plus minus day. Give a plus for the things we liked from the last week, and we do hit on some minuses, and I'm going to do that in a minute. Before we do that, just want to remind you about the podcast Locked on NHL. The regular season's kicking off this week. All the teams are going to be back in action. Somebody's going to be chasing the Predators for first place in the in the NHL. And if you are curious about what's going on across the league, you need to check out Locked on NHL. It is a daily 30-minute podcast where the hosts reach out and talk to ex experts across the league about what's going on in their team, in their division, with their star players. You can get all of the news in the NHL in one daily 30-minute podcast. You can check out Locked on NHL anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. It is your daily 30-minute hockey podcast. All right, so it's Monday, and even though I don't have Nick with me, we're going to dive in real quick, and we are going to hit on our plus minuses from the week, and there's a lot to choose from. The Predators had a packed week with the Global Series, and my first plus is going to be about the Global Series, and that is the time they spent in Bern with Roman Yossi in front of his hometown crowd. Y'all can hardly stand it. Um, if you thought that you were a little verklempt and choked up when you watched Behind the Glass, where Cody Glass found out he was going to Europe, I have a sneaky suspicion it's going to be just as emotional when we see Roman Yossi in his hometown of Bern, Switzerland and playing in the arena that he played in when he grew up in Bern. All of his family and friends there. If you follow the Predators and some of the players on social media, you will have seen that Roman Yossi had the guys over to his parents' house for dinner you saw him uh, greeting the crowd at the end of the game and kind of leading them in their chant. Absolutely just so wonderful. And I think we forget sometimes, every so often I have this thought at a game as we're singing the national anthem, like so many of these players, this is not their home country's national anthem. And I think we take for granted here as Americans who have the NHL here, so many of these players don't get to play in their hometowns. They don't get to play in front of their families and their and their close friends like we assume, you know, American players and, and a lot of Canadian players do. So to see Roman Yossi have that moment, to see Oh my gosh, Nino Niederreiter hugging his grandparents after the game, y'all. I cannot even with that. It was just, it was really sweet. And so 
for me, great that we got the four points. Great that we got things going against San Jose. But for me, probably the biggest plus was just Roman Yossi, Nino Niederreiter having that time in burn. So huge plus. And again, check out social media if you want to see some of the pictures. If you have like a cry stuck, like it will get unstuck because it was it was really sweet. It was really special. And and for somebody who is as good on and off the ice as Roman Yossi is, it was wonderful to see that be a gift for him. Of course, there were some minuses. One of them is, we've touched on it already, and that is the Phil Tomasino situation. This is, for lack of a better word, interesting. Um, not really sure what's happening. I don't necessarily think we're in a situation where John Hines is going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I don't feel like, you know, Tomasino is, is um, at the end of his time playing for the Predators or anything like that. Um, you know, but what do you do if you have other players that stepped up in training camp and performed better? And look, Having been there, I will tell you, Kiefer Sherwood had an incredible training camp. Cole Smith had a great training camp. Um, so what do the Predators do with Phil Tomasino? When will we see him in the lineup? Where will he slot in the lineup? Is his style of play going to get him consistent ice time? He's maybe not somebody that you think of as a more physical, hard-to-play-against player Tomasino's game tends to be more offensive minded, high hockey IQ. So, you know, it just sort of feels, it feels a little weird kind of having this talented player and, and not really knowing where he's going to land. So for me, the whole ambiguity with Phil Tomasino right now is a bit of a minus. Um, and again, I feel like John Hines is pretty upfront. I don't about how he decides his lineup, but I just don't know how you dismiss Tomasino in his talent. So for me, not really seeing how this is going to kind of work out, where he's going to fit in, how he's going to be used, that's a bit of a minus for me right now. It 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 causes me a bit of a pause. Let's just say that. Um, another minus, and we just have to talk about this, and I don't want to talk about this, friends, because if I had a nickel for every time we've talked about this, I I would have been in Prague, um, except I didn't have a passport. That's a whole other thing. That's penalties. Y'all, I, I, I just don't know. I mean, like, I know it's the beginning of the season, and I know, you know, everybody's kind of little, you know, Bambi on ice trying to get their legs under them. And so some of these penalties are going to happen over the course of kind of getting into the regular season groove. But when your last season, when one of the main storylines of your last season was how many penalties your team took, how many unnecessary penalties your team took, one would think it would be a topic of conversation repeatedly and attention would be paid to, hey, how about you keep track of your stick? You know, and again, Nick and I have talked about there are penalties that make sense. There are penalties that are good to take. And then there are penalties that make you want to claw your eyes out with a hockey stick. And we had just way too many of those second kinds. I mean, we're talking slash, boarding, cross-checking. And, and, you know, I get the cross-checking and boarding one. There was a couple that was like, but you have hooking, you have interference. Like I'm going to need the predators to clean that up. Like this is something that John Hines has to address. And I get it. You play a certain style of hockey, you play on an edge, yada, yada, yada. You've got to play on an edge that does not lead you to the sin bin because the predators, you know, uh, San Jose was one for seven on the power play. So you know, not bad, but let us not test that because what you saw in these first two games was not necessarily San Jose lighten it up on the power play, but what you saw is that the momentum of the game stayed tipped towards San Jose long after those penalties expired. So you had two minutes in the box and then you had about four minutes, five minutes of the Predators trying desperately to get the momentum back in the game. And playing that momentum catch up is not a game the Predators need to engage in. So for me, penalties, 
y'all, we have got to do something about that. It's not something that the predators can consistently be doing and be successful. We saw that last season. And here's the thing. You are not going to give a team three and four penalties in a game and walk away unscathed like they were kind of able to do against San Jose. There are too many teams, especially in the Central Division, who will make the Predators pay. Penalties, huge minus for me. Huge, fat minus, really. Don't make me say this all season long, y'all. I am begging you. Uh, a plus, another plus is that the Predators are a better team this season with Ryan McDonough and Nino Niederreiter. Regardless of how the record is, just Predators fans need to feel really good about these two offseason acquisitions. You did not hear Ryan McDonough's name a lot in the broadcasts of these two games because he was just doing his job. He was playing the game. He was taking care of business. And that is what the Predators needed defensively. They needed defensive depth and they needed responsible defensemen. And they've got that with Ryan McDonough. And so I just think with Nita Ryder's three goals, the quality defensive play by McDonough, everybody in Nashville needs to feel better about this roster, the talent on this roster with those two additions in the offseason. So as much as it sometimes pains Nashville Predators fans to say it, I say kudos to David Poyle for those two pickups because those two players are making the Nashville Predators a better team. And of course, we do not ever want to end on a negative. So we're going to end on one more positive because it was such a great experience. We are, of course, going to take away like warm, fuzzy positives from this past week. But for me, another fat plus was seeing Nash live his best life in Prague. Again, if y'all aren't following the Predators on social media, you need to do that because it was hilarious. Um, Nash went out, took Prague by storm, quite frankly, um, spent time on Charles Bridge, started dancing, found out later it was with a young English tourist who was visiting Prague, started dancing with her because there's, you know, musicians and stuff playing on the Charles Bridge, sat down with a sketch artist, got a caricature, which actually looked exactly like him because there you have it. And then during the games, it was really fun. There was a clip of um, Nash and Sharky, which may not be the most clever mascot name, but we're just going to let that one slide. Um, kind of having a dance off and then going into the Titanic scene. And it was really amazing. And I also want to give a shout out to someone else living their best life in Prague. And that is our friend, Prexican, Pre I cannot say this, Prexican too. He was rousing the crowd up, lit it up, represented Nashville and Nashville Predators fans so well, made uh, a mark. Um, Germany's NHL, sweet, uh, Sweden's NHL featured him because quite frankly, he is an international sensation and a Nashville treasure. So it was really great to see you know, Nashville represented so well, not just on ice in, in, you know, the wins, but to just kind of see the spirit of Nashville Predators fans in Prague kind of taking over the crowd and just showing that regardless of where you are in this world, you now know that Nashville is a hockey town. So really an amazing, an amazing weekend. So that is going to do it for today's information packed Monday episode. We have lots of great things coming up this week. Of course, we are back in the swing with regular season games on Thursday, the home opener against the Dallas stars. Woo. Can't wait. Really need to win that game. Um, so we have that coming up on Thursday. And of course we'll have your game reca recap. We will have your um, preview also on Thursday. Uh, coming up tomorrow, I am joined by my great friend and Locked On counterpart at Locked On Kraken, Erica Ayala. She and I are going to take a big look at the Western Conference. And on Wednesday, I'm going to have a really interesting conversation with a good friend in hockey and uh, Paige Martin. She and I are going to sit down and we're going to have kind of... Um, a serious discussion about the state of hockey and hockey culture. So 
a little bit more serious conversation coming up later this week with Paige, but hope that you will join us for that. Um, but that's all we have for today's episode. Be sure that you are following Locked on Predators um, on Twitter. It's LO underscore Predators. Of course, you can find our episode on YouTube. Check out any of our videos there on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter at ANK Mama on Ice, and you can find my work at InsideThePreds.com. We want to thank you again for joining us and for making Locked on Predators your first listen of the day. Go and make Locked on NHL your second listen of the day and find out how all the other teams are preparing for their regular season start. And we will see you tomorrow for another episode.